you're alive. Hey y'all, Derek, Charleston on the water. Soon to change that though, but uh, right now we're still officially Charleston on the water. Out here today, out on the boat. Um, boy, do I have a treat for you. We're, uh, we're about to go cook some scallops and some script, <laughs> some shrimp, low country shrimp with Brandon. Say hey. How y'all doing? He, uh, Brandon was kind enough to drive all the way up from Beaufort, South Carolina, to hang out with us today. So he's um, he's bringing his great grandma's recipe with him, and, uh, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. While we're uh, while I've got your attention, let me just show you. I um, had an issue with the laptop. The laptop died, so got a new laptop out here today. Still got a rat's nest of electronics going. Um, hopefully, you'll see the cell phone is in a Wii booster right now that runs up to here to the horn and uh, it should be giving us a fairly good signal. Let's go ahead while we're here and do a quick test and see how everything is going. Let's do a speed test. And run it real quick. So I've been getting hit or mix um results here but we're running full bars on the cell phone as you can see and we are running looks like it's going to give us about 14 megabytes per second maybe a little bit better on the download but the upload is what's more important so let's see oh that's about 17 and a half and the upload looks like it's doing even better um than I was expecting. So if we're if we're sitting somewhere around 15 right now, it's probably going to come in at 11, which should be enough for a good stream. Oh my goodness, we should be sitting with a good stream right now. So let's uh, let's go back here. Uh, Jeff, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for coming out. Um, stream, I'm hoping looks a lot better than it has in the past. We've got Brandon up there. And we are going to go ahead and throw some scallops on the grill. So let me walk you to the bow. I've got this one a little bit mobile now. So we should be able to get you some pretty good quality. I will be working as cameraman and Brandon is going to be doing all the cooking today. So what are we cooking today, Brandon? So buddy of mine, Captain John, was uh, kind enough to bring me these scallops down from New Bedford. He runs the uh, Eagle Eye 2 long line boat. And when he was bringing the boat down for the season, they fished down south here during the winter time. Okay. This is my Christmas present. Nice. So we get to enjoy that today. And the recipe is your great grandma's recipe. No, no, not on these. That, not was, a... that was that other one I sent you. Oh, that was the dip? No. That was the uh, casserole. Oh, the casserole. So, yeah, we're going to have to cook that one again soon, though. But bacon wrap scallop is one of my favorite favorite things to eat. They um, they do a great job over on Shem Creek with uh, Red's Ice House with bacon wrap scallops. And that, that, they put them, and then they put shrimp on a skewer. And that's some of my favorite stuff to eat. So we're in for a real treat today. So this is some of Derek's bacon, and you notice it's thick cut, so we put it in the uh, smoker for a little while, pre-cooked it some, but notice how it's still a little raw on the outside, but not a problem. It's going to finish getting cooked, so just take it and wrap it on up. And if it goes over a little bit, you can always just break it off or either just let it go and just uh, skewer it on up. So again, like you said, that's a uh, Cooper River Farm bacon. That is a local bacon that we sell um, to the different restaurants around the, the Carolinas and even down in the Florida. But so, Brandon, what's your what's your culinary experience? Because you've talked about you know your friends and everything say you want to you should open a restaurant and all that. Well. I grew up at a fish camp on the backside of a barrier island. So wide variety. And of course I stayed under my grandmother's feet and learned from the best. And then 
over the years, cooked all sorts of things for different friends, at different events, and everybody all, oh, you ought to open a restaurant. You ought to open a restaurant. Why? So y'all can come eat? <laughs> I enjoy cooking. I don't want to make a living out of it. Well, again, thank you for coming to hang out with us here today. This is a real treat. Like I said, bacon wrapped scallops are one of my favorite. Um, we do some big events with um, the Citadel, and this is this is always one of one of my big things to make sure that's on the menu is uh, is bacon wrapped scallops. I, I just I really enjoy these, and I'm very very much so looking forward to what we've got going on here today. Awesome, we got uh, we got Greg here, we got Tim here. The whole gang's here. Jeff, Greg, Tim, great, awesome. Great seeing you. Hopefully the uh, the stream quality is much better today. That we Booster, um, I'm hoping, is doing the trick. I went ahead and put the Sony uh, ZV-1 just on a, on a little hand thing here. And then we've got the, uh, the robot ready to go for you here in a second. So let me, while he's wrapping that, see if it'll start tracking me so you can see what it does. So yeah, that, that will track me as I move, and um, maybe maybe it will. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Now it's following. Uh, the issues I got with that is we're finding out is as it comes and follows me over here, the axis um, the axis is kind of canted. So it follows us out to to the bow, and the picture's much better because I had to angle it down so we can see what's going on here but uh when i walk back to the helm i still got some some things to work out with that but we are having a hell of a good time out here today We're having a little bit of issue with bugs and uh brandon had to run and get some bug spray because i put the uh the tiki torches out hoping that that citronella here would keep the bugs away and it does a good job with mosquitoes but no cms not so much well, it's sand that season. Sand that's exactly. A little buggers with a lot of teeth. So. Do I, well, I'm about to ask if you need my help and you only got three slices of bacon left. <laughs> we about got it handled. So where are these scallops coming from? Off the uh, North Atlantic deep okay. water. So these aren't the Floridian Gulf scallops. These are the cold deep water scallops. Gotcha. And for those watching, what's the difference? Can you? Um, you know, I couldn't really tell you. Supposedly these are better. I've never really had uh, Gulf scallops that much, so. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you the difference either myself. I was hoping to, hoping we could. Um, Tim's Tim's wife, the chef, probably can tell us what the difference is. Uh, but we'll go ahead. You're following me over here, real quick. Let me check and see what's what's going on. Awesome. Yeah, Andy, you're here today. The scallops. I see you doing a lot of stuff with scallops, and I'm I'm really glad you're coming to hang out with us. Twenty bucks a pound from Greg. Yeah, scallops, scallops aren't cheap. That's a nice treat. It's a it's a very nice treat we're out here today. And like I said, I mean, we've got the Cooper River bacon, uh, which is $10 a pound, plus the scallops at $20 a pound market value. This, this, is a, this is a real treat out here on the boat today. So. Oh, it is my favorite way to fix it. Yeah. Hands down. I mean, you can fix them numerous different ways, but uh, wrapped in bacon on the grill, that's it. So I've done it with some old bay and some other things, but uh, just keep it simple, just salt and pepper, and that's it. And don't let the bottle fool you. This is uh, some pink Himalayan salt. I just put it in this container. Nice. Yeah, you can, you can see in there for sure that it's, it's pink salt. Let me... Trying to still get this robot figured out. He's 
following me a little bit, but he's following a little too closely on me. Well, R2-D2 is a little slow. <laughs> he's not doing his beep boop, beep boops over there, though. But... So yeah, we're back out in the spot that I've been filming in. Um, had a little bit of a run in with the tide last time. And for those of y'all who were missing me on Saturday and Sunday last week, um, Saturday, I made the, the, made the turn through Elliott's Cut. And as soon as I came through Elliott's Cut onto the Stono River, the, uh, the wind was at my bow and it was a wet ride the entire way back. And by the time I made it back in the creek, just around the corner here, I ran out of water. So I um, ended up dropping the spuds and low crawling through about a thousand feet of marsh. And by the time I got back, I was semi hypothermic because it was like 40 something degrees, the sun down, wet and windy. So Saturday was a, a recovery day. I went out with the paddle board. Mariner hopped in the water, we paddled back to the barge, pulled the spuds, finished getting it back to land, and then called it, called it quits. And I went ahead and got the tether figured out. I think the signal degradation between the cell phone being on Wi-Fi and the uh, um, cell phone being on Wi-Fi and using cellular data was what the issue was. So I went ahead and figured out how to tether it. And once I got it tethered, um, I think the quality is much better on the stream. So we're adding hickory chips there. Yes, yeah, so that's all I generally use. And I don't soak them. I just throw them straight on there, get a little extra heat and plenty of smoke. Nice. Nice. So yeah, I um, ended up having a Go back with the paddleboard, get the barge, and then from the barge, um, started messing around with the tether. Hey, well, might as well throw these. Yep. Yeah, might as well throw those on the grill too. Sorry, I just made y'all a little bit dizzy there with that spin. But uh, I got to shut this thing down. So the chips will flame up real quick, but on the Weber, you can choke it down and the fire will go down. Nice. Yeah, so I, I ended up having to um, get a new laptop. I I took the the other laptop out. Got a great signal for a test. I uh, I linked that test to some of y'all to show you. It. And then uh, what happened was the power port pulled out on me, so I didn't have power in that laptop anymore. Had another laptop uh, sitting in a closet at a friend's house. A buddy of mine who runs the uh, bar at Rito's on Folly was using this laptop for a while until his mom went ahead and got him a new laptop. And when she got him a new laptop, this thing just kind of hit the closet. And from the closet, was forgotten about until I needed it. And I was like, yeah, John, can I meet you? So Tuesday night, I met him up at about 10.30 uh, to get this laptop, get it set, and then had to go through all the updates, get everything loaded up. So we're out here again today with y'all. Hope everything's going great. Awesome. Great seeing that, Greg, that the uh, video is the best you've ever seen. Um, really appreciate that. Hope the, hope the live stream quality is going well because, like I said, I, I want to be able to bring you these videos live so I can get you um, a lot of videos two, three times a week and then edit them down and get some shorter video for you. But the big thing I need to be able to do is get you some good quality live streams in the meantime so we can we can really help build this channel. Bacon, bacon, bacon. <laughs> oh, we got, a, we got a husband and wife in the chat here right now saying hey to each other. Hey, y'all. Uh, congratulations again on the, um, the chef of the year for the, uh, the West. Western Division. That is very exciting. Congratulations. Awesome job. Those of you all who don't follow her, I'll go ahead and put that on um, her Instagram. She puts some amazing food. I'm going to put her Instagram in the, uh, in the chat for, I mean, in the description for y'all. 
So let's um, let's hop back out here real quick and see what we're gonna get next. We're gonna we mess with the shrimp or we're waiting for a minute. Uh, we go ahead and do this, and then we can do the shrimp. Okay. So how long are we waiting on these for then? They're not gonna take long at all. We'll give them here another minute, and we'll check it and flip it. Oh wow, that's really quick. That is really quick. So, in the meantime, you got any good water stories from the Buford area? Which one you want? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got that kind of time, do we? <laughs> we ain't got that kind of time. We were heading offshore one morning. Uh, we're in a 27-foot center console with twin 250 Mercury's. That boat would run 63 low on fuel. Um, I believe it was like four o'clock in the morning on middle of the week. There's a handful of us on board. We we're going to run out to the stream and we we're coming out Port Royal Sound. Um, <clears throat> just happened to flip on the spotlight and we're about two foot off of a submerged pile and bobbing up and down. So lucky we didn't hit that. We would have sunk. Um, got out there to what we call a hole in the wall, which is between Bay Point and Hilton Head. Yeah, yeah. And it was all you could do to stand up. You had to brace yourself on something. I mean, it was rough as a cob. And I was like, you sure y'all want to go offshore? Oh, yeah, we done took off work. Let's go. So generally, it's about a four-hour ride to get out there because it's 80 miles plus or minus, just depending on the way it is. So... I think we were four hours in. We still had, you know, another 15 miles or so to go. And I was running the boat that day, had to, you know, going slow, had it bogged back, just trying not to get a teeth knocked out. And the owner pushed me out the way, ah, let me run it. So I was like, okay. So I went and got all the way at the back and stern towards the transom, hunkered down like this. He nailed it. It all was broke the t-top busted up <laughs> a bunch of gel coats some other stuff i mean it was just nasty that day what do we got what do we got see how that one started to turn yeah sticking just a tad oh look at that they look delicious Leave it off for a minute, get a little bit more heat back up. Yeah, Brandon wanted to come out and cook on a grill. So uh, we put some some metal down to protect the, the uh, carpet. And um, I didn't want, want to burn up the boys' indoor outdoor carpet now. <laughs> Fancy. It's fancy. It, it adds a nice little touch to the, the bow of this boat, though. Um, while he's doing that, let me take y'all on a quick little walkabout and just show you a couple different things since the stream is, quality is so good. Um, this is where we're spudded down right now. Um, that spud there is the port spud. You see the, uh, the bent. Let me zoom in on that. We, you see the bent bolt that's holding it there. The stop right there is the only thing that saved me last Friday from not losing that spud. So it's spudded down on the shallower side of the creek. And then we've got the deeper water is where the other spud is. Mariners out here today. What's up, buddy boy? Huh? The bestest dog. And then he's got his buddy Rio. Rio's the, the mutt. He's going up pretty quick. Rio's got a little, got a little, uh, little bit of an injury. May have put him in his place earlier. Mariner's like one of the most chill dogs ever. But Rio's just in that puppy stage where he's wanting to play way too much. And Mariner like had enough of it earlier. And he just heard a god awful cry when uh, when he put Rio in his in his place there with that that bite to the the snout. So he'll be feeling that one later. It hadn't phased him a bit. No, no, it hadn't slowed him down at all. But those are looking delicious. Mm -hmm. 
Those are looking delicious. Probably should have had a little bit more coals on it. Speak, yeah, he'll get under your speaking feet. Speaking of that, he just got stepped on. <laughs> he hadn't quite figured everything out yet. <laughs> hey. He's hey. ready to play. Yeah, he is. Chill. Chill. Are he going to put you in your place again? Dog's got some attitude to him. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and get y'all switch back over to the other one for a second. And uh, we got Jeff asking, did they have shells? No, sir. They shook them out on the boat. Um, Put them in containers. So when your buddy brings you these, how much does he bring you? Um, let's see, how many did I get this year? I think I got... 12 pounds. 12 pounds of scallops. That's a good friend. Well, you know. <laughs> what can we say? Yeah, that's a good friend. And he he drove all the way up from Buford to bring them to me. This is awesome. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I, like, I was tickled to death when you were like, yeah, I'm bringing scallops. We're coming up. We're going to cook on the boat. And it's like, oh, my God. Like I said, to all of y'all watching, the invite's open. You got to deal with a little bit of a gypsy camp and chaos with the barge um, while I figure things out. But the offer's open. Anyone wanting to come out and cook, uh, come on with it. This is, this is what I'll be doing this summer is cooking with y'all out on the boat, hanging out and chilling. And, um, yeah, I do have a request um, that I got emailed the other day to see some uh, fried green tomatoes and pork rinds with um, with pimento cheese, mm. and uh, so that that will be happening in the near future. But like I said, next weekend is the wine and food festival. Hopefully, the stream is still going solid. Um, let me know in the comments. Hit, hit me with a thumbs up as far as the quality goes. If it is where it needs to be for y'all. And I uh, want to take this thing, spread it down off of the North Charleston Waterfront Park and do some cooking out there if, uh, if we can keep this quality going the way it is. So kind of disappointed Friday. I didn't have a good quality stream for y'all last Friday because it was, aside from the, the chit show that was the tent, for those of y'all that managed to watch that, um, Jalen, Cooking with Jalen was one of the best streams ever. He came out with all sorts of different stuff, and I, I just couldn't get the quality for y'all. And um, the word I forgot was yet, because today is a great stream. Very excited with these scallops for y'all. And then after these scallops, we got some shrimp. We're going to do some uh, Miss Pat Vinay's pork roll shrimp dip. Oh, man. Port Royal Shrimp Dip. So, let me, while he's out here cooking, let me hop over here real quick and read some comments. See what y'all got going on. Chilling and grilling from Greg. Float up the Sacramento River. <laughs> it might take me a while to get there. Might take me a while to get there. But Whoop, those, those are looking really good. Let me switch all over to the uh, other camera real quick. And show you what we're working with here. These scallops are looking delicious. I 
through those chips on there and then they got all that bacon fat going. Yeah. So I know I've told you about the uh, the Cooper River Farm bacon before. You can get a close in on that. Oh man, look at that. So the Cooper River Farm bacon is a um, dry rub. I'm sorry, it's a it's a hand rub dry cure applewood smoked bacon. So it's a uh, target target slice is 1014. Sorry, let me get that to focus in real quick. Target weight is a 1014, which means 10 to 14 slices per pound. Um, so it's a thicker cut. You'll notice this one here is a little bit thinner than I typically like. Um, but the benefit of the thinner stuff is they can come off the production line because I'm not going to send them out to the restaurants and, uh, and come out here and hang out with us and get wrapped around some beautiful scallops and make made into a dish. But um, so we pull pigs from Southern Virginia, South Carolina and North Carolina all along the the I-95 corridor, and when we spec them, we're looking for a four-way cross. We're looking for um, Duroc, Berkshire, Hampshire, and Chester Whites. So it's all heirloom breeds is what we're looking for at these family-owned farms, and it goes into this delicious pork product that I'll be bringing you a lot more recipes for. I have, for those of y'all who've seen the short, I've got to get to editing and get a video out from last Sunday with Colin where we did a twist on instead of um chicken and waffles we did a pork chop and waffles and it was amazing it was a it was a hoe cake um hot honey pork chop and it was absolutely delicious and i need to get you that video to share with y'all soon but really really looking forward to to this summer and growing these live streams with y'all because this is some amazing stuff and now Hopefully the quality is where it needs to be, and we can just start having fun this summer. One of my favorite videos, Brandon, I'm not sure if you've seen it, is my video where I talk to people about their first boat. So, what was your first boat? Um, well, actually, I used Dad's Bado. Okay. Um, so, it was a 1972... 15 foot owl craft with a 25 on it. And that's what we went to the camp in growing up. And dad quit going in the river back in the 90s because he said there was too many people out there. In the 90s? In the 90s. Well, you got to remember, growing up around here, there wasn't anybody around. Yeah. And then once everybody started moving around here, he's like, oh, there's too many people around here. So he just quit. The 90s, though. Yeah. These rivers are, like, even more busy. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I know in the last 15, 20 years. Oh. Let alone since the 90s. Mid-90s. Yeah. So did she have a name? Um, no. No? What's your best memory of that boat, though? Uh, we had so many. Um, I rebuilt it in, I think, 99. He actually would go get clams and stuff and oysters, mainly clams, though, out there around the camp. And so every year he would go dig enough clams and all and would get a new motor because back then, you know, the motors weren't worth a two. Yeah and run them for a season or two and get another one. And I think the last one he purchased for that boat was, I want to say somewhere around the mid eighties or something like that. And went down there to the local place. I'm not going to say the name of it. And he about fell over with the price Ooh. and said, that's the last one I'm buying. <laughs> um, now he bought an 18 foot uh, west boat which that was before they came Key West right had a, a 70 Evan route on it uh, ran that for a handful of years but when I rebuilt the boat you know had to do a little bit of glass work painted it and I put a uh, 25 Yamaha on it and 
dad ran it one time. He said, great God, that thing flies. <laughs> I mean, night and day difference from the old Evan Rudy hat on it. Nice. And I did a little bit of duck hunting in it. My favorite is I love gigging. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's anyone on the channel watching this feed that's not familiar with gigging, but if there is, what is gigging? So low tide, I prefer after midnight, so it'd be nice and still and quiet. And you'd want to do an incoming tide. That way the fish are moving up the bank. So you go pole along the bank and you would see the fish, the flounder, land out there. And I'd also stick some bass, sheephead, drum. Um, I've stuck some big old roll mullet. The biggest flounder I ever stuck and weighed went 10 pounds, quarter ounce, and I've stuck bigger. Nice. Um, but I found a fella down there in Green Cove Springs, Florida, that had to mold to the old Owlcraft and had him build me one back in 2003 or so. And I kept that boat until was it last year when they changed the regulation down to two fish. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, it's not worth going out there in the middle of the night for that. No, it's not. It's really not. So I sold it. Gotcha. And the past couple of years um, before that, it was starting to get few and far between having to struggle with to go uh, get your limit of fish. And I mean, you're talking about going out there a few times a year um, as it is anyway. Right. Right. So they did the... Uh, study on the population on the fish and figured out that there's really three major populations in our area that came in there to Beaufort, um, up there, Winyall Bay, and then um, North Carolina. Okay. And then North Carolina's got the commercial flounder fishery. Right. And so they just kept on hammering the population and that's why we don't have any. And I'd see, you know, the same boats out there, you know, if you go a couple of nights in a row, night after night after night, and it's like, well, no wonder there's no fish. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's one thing that I love and hate about some of this area is, like, when I was in college, people would joke, if it flies, it dies, if it's brown, it it's down, and like, you know, the fish it, they'll fish it and fish it all day long. And it's like, you, you need to manage your population. You need, you need to manage the herd when you're managing the deer on the land. You need to manage, you know, the, the fish and your fisheries. And you need to manage what flies in your area and what, you know, the flocks that visit your area. And, and like you said, and then the problem is, is it's cool when it's like a little bit of a population and a little bit of people that are out there doing stuff. But as the waterways get busier and busier, it's not everyone can do that. Well, Cobia season down there, Broad River. I mean, you could literally oh, man. walk across all the boats, the river. Oh yeah, and not hit the water. You can, you can. Well, it used to. Uh huh. And one of my old neighbors, he'd go out there every weekend and some during the week, and come back with, you know, a handful of fish. And it's like, what are you doing with all those fish? Right. And these are all pregnant females. Yeah. Full of rope. Yeah. And then next thing you know, handful of years later, there's no fish out there. It's like you wonder why. Yeah. Yeah. You, the spawning females, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. You got to let them back out in the water and they let them do their thing. Reproduce. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, are they ready? This one was out the longest. Cooled off enough. Give it a little taste. All right. Let's. Uh, can I get this thing to zoom in for y'all? There we go. She's zooming in some. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's get you zoomed in on that so you can see these bacon wrapped scallops that Brandon's making here. <laughs> you can't see Mariner hopping up though. I mean, he he didn't even hesitate. He hopped right up from the kitchen to thinking he was getting fed.
he's back here now waiting on a taste. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now you see that why I like to cook it that way. Mm-hmm. And that bacon of yours isn't too bad either. No, it's delicious. So I am talking with my mouth full like a sob, but this is sorry y'all missing out. Mm. See all the juice running off there. Mm. Wow. That is that is amazing. Let me one more time. I'm gonna walk back here. I'm gonna grab this camera for you. <clears throat> So you can see these things. They are absolutely amazing. You can see the juice there. We got Rio here begging. And then we got Mariner not even not even ashamed of himself. He's gonna do a big stretch for the camera. He's wanting some bacon wrapped scallops, and I can't blame him. Those things those things are delicious. And it was just salt, pepper, that's it, and bacon. I've done it with old bay, but <clears throat> salt and pepper is the way to go. Gotcha. And speaking of the Old Bay, it's here because it's here for the shrimp, right? Correct. So are we about to go hop on the shrimp, or what are we going to do? One more taste, and they're going down. Nice. Nice. So while he's tasting that, I'm going to walk back over here to the helm and see what's going on in the chat section real quick. Um, yep, nicely done. Andy, see you there. <laughs> it is nicely done. It's delicious. Um we are very close to the edge. Uh, there probably needs to be a rail around this um, at some point. But right now, all my guests are, uh, are very, very experienced with the water. So hopefully nobody goes for a swim. And if they do, we got even a better show for you. Uh, what else we got going on? Oh, we got Victor here saying, yo, hey, Victor, good to see you. Hope the stream's much better for you. Um, we've got yeah, grab some butter. Real quick. Dip them in butter. Oh, man, that's one of my favorite things to do. They don't need butter. With butter. Um, most things are either a vessel for butter or a ranch, and uh, seafood is definitely a butter vessel. Um, what else do we got going on? Looking good. Thank you, thank you. We need to get you out here. You and Tim need to hop on a plane at some point and come out to the come out to the east coast from the west coast. Go back to your kitchen. Awesome. Thanks again for coming out. Have fun in the kitchen. Post some pictures on Instagram. Can't wait to see them. Mint the platter. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Very close to the edge. Man is gonna hop up there and snag some of them so we're transferring over to the kitchen here you can Come see on in the office brandon getting in there so let me bring y'all in here to see what he's got going on so you're putting some old bay in there we have muddy water around here so we cook in muddy water <laughs> i love that we have muddy water so we cook in muddy water so it's already smelling good. We got these are last season shrimp, though, right? We're gonna tell on ourselves a little. Yeah, pull them out and freeze them. Nice. Let me get y'all a good picture of those shrimp going in. Can I get you that? Sorry for all the moving, guys. Oh, it's already smelling delicious in here. How long do those go in for? Not long at all. Not long at all. Is that a measurement of time? <laughs> So, friends don't let friends eat imported shrimp. That is a bumper sticker that you can see on so many local vehicles here in town. That was a campaign for a while, too, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Now, did you catch these shrimp, or are these shrimp caught commercially? Off the boat. Off the boat? Did you happen to see that uh, that shrimp boat that was unqualified, Captain? Almost got run over by a cruise ship out of Tampa Harbor, it looked like. No, sir. Did not see that. No, you didn't see that one? 
I think the, the shrimper might have been walked away from the helm for a second or, or what is what it looks like. Can't say I haven't been there before. So for y'all that don't know how to cook shrimp, if you have it to a rolling boil, this thing wasn't quite up there. Get your water boiling, turn it off, then put your shrimp in. Stir it around, and we'll get Derek to zoom in here in a minute. In a minute. Not just yet, huh? Well, I mean, you can look <laughs> here now, but see how that one's still a tad opaque? Yeah. So it needs a little bit more. That's the biggest problem is people overcook them. So I, you got to remember when we pull them out, they're still going to be cooking. Right. That, I don't think a lot of people realize that about food in general. That when you temp it, it you still let it rest and it comes up another 5, 10 degrees, depending on how you cooked it and whatnot. And there's all kind of stuff. And people say, oh, well, you need to cook them for three minutes or five minutes and put them in the ice bath and this, that, and the other. You don't need to do any of that stuff. If you just watch it, like right now, they're... See how all of them are just about turned? So they're ready to come off. That quick, huh? It doesn't take them all. No, it doesn't at all. It doesn't at all. I made a joke about it. Is that a measurement of time? And that was a measurement of time. We got going on here, Tim. In fact, I'm assuming you're talking about the uh, method of cooking. Um, we got rubber going on there. Nothing like a local catch. No, no, it's it's. Um, I think one of my favorite things in the low country here is the different connections I have that I can go out and get local food, and it's it's awesome getting Brandon to come up from Buford and bring some local food with him as well. So he's in there straining them out, getting all that liquid out. You get to see the nice dirty kitchen. Maybe I'll zoom in a little bit more so you don't see how dirty the kitchen is right now. <laughs> so then, see how they're still steaming, so they're still cooking. Yeah, man. So we'll follow him back out here and maybe switch all over to the camera again for the moment. And then what are we doing with the shrimp? All right. We got to peel them. Okay. Once they cool off a minute. Glove up. Did I not get enough? You're good. I'll get one more. Might as well just grab another handful. Well, what'd you say? I couldn't hear you over the generator. There you go. Pollen, huh? The pollen is horrendous right now. I mean, utterly horrendous. It's it's that season right now where Zyrtec is my uh, is my ally at the moment. That's the only way I can really get through this season is with some ample supply of Zyrtec. What? So let's oh, we got real barking. Let's see if we can get that camera following us again a little bit. Walk over this way. So, for y'all that don't know how to peel shrimp, you take it. Let me get behind you real quick. <laughs> All right. Get you to pinch. not going to participate. There we go. Pinch off the legs. At the front right there. Swing that around. 
and then grab the tail and squeeze. That simple. A lot of people don't know how to peel shrimp either. If you look there, that's the row. Okay. Which they'll be catching the row shrimp here in another month or so. And again, for those watching that may not know. That's the eggs. That's the eggs. Gives it extra flavor. <laughs> but see how easy that peeled. All right, let me hop in, I guess. Now, I've always been taught you grab the legs, right? Grab the legs, whip it around, and then squeeze the tail. Bounce back over to the farther camera. Then you can always sample your work. <laughs> mm. Nice and sweet. Shrimp and scallops, like I said, these are two of my favorites. When I uh, am stuck on these diets like I am right now, like I said, reds, one of my favorite things to do is go there and get their bacon wrap scallops, and then they got a bacon wrap shrimp. Both of them on skewers, and it makes for a delicious plate. Well, people always ask me, say, well, where's a good place to go eat seafood in town? I said, at your house. <laughs> well, the problem is um, a lot of those restaurants I found is they'll have flounder on the menu, and they'll end up serving you catfish. And then if you say something to them about it, then they might bring you a piece of whiting or Oh, here, we'll just credit you that off the bill. And your palate's developed enough, you can tell that. Oh, I can look at the fish and tell you. <laughs> most tourists aren't able to do that, though, huh? Oh, most people don't know any better. And it's 99% of the time, it's all imported shrimp. A lot of the stuff that you get in the market's been sitting around for a while. You know, you just got to watch what you're getting. Um, that's why I go get these from uh, the captain off the boat. He's got them a little uh, stand set up there. So what he's been doing is putting it on, uh, I call it face page instead of Facebook. <laughs> um, let you know when they're coming in and he heads them up five pounds at the time and one gallon bags and that's where he sells them and i'll go out there and get 40 50 pounds at the clip twice a year and it just kills me people say i ask them say you want some shrimp oh i just want a pound two pounds when you can get good product at a reasonable price, load the freezer down. What's a reasonable price for local shrimp these days? <clears throat> um, you know, I think in the markets they've been selling it for 14, 15 bucks, something like that. So, okay. But I don't know. I hadn't been in the market. Um, anything under 10 with the full price way it had been is reasonable, I believe, especially if it's uh, quality. Yeah, everything kind of went through the roof with uh, COVID too, didn't it? I know blue crab went through the roof the last couple seasons. and Well, that's the problem. The I'll take the roast shrimp and butterfly them pull the row to the side and take the jumbo lump and stack them on top 
old bay and then put the rose sack back on it, drizzle it with butter, and then roll it in the oven for a few minutes. And I've had people that say, oh, I don't eat shrimp. And then you turn around and a quarter of the tray will be gone. And it's like, with well, daggum, it just took me over an hour to sit there and do all that work. <laughs> and like you said, during COVID, you couldn't hardly get any of the U.S. blue crab because they weren't bringing in any of the imports. So everybody else was stuck on using the domestic product. And what they did is the jumbo lump, they were labeling the lump as jumbo lump and the price went up from, I think it was $55 or 60 bucks and it went up to, I think $78. Oh, so geez. you were getting an inferior product and paying more. But it is what it is. It's either that or you go catch the crabs or buy some crabs and sit there all day and pick it out. Yeah. So what you going to do? You know, most people are going to pay the price. That's it. Yeah. All right, so what are we going to do now that we've got these, uh, these shrimp peeled? All right, we got those ready. So we're going to bust out the, the food processor here. While he does that, I'm going to help myself to another bacon wrap scallop. If you're just tuning in, go ahead and rewatch that part. Um, it's totally worth it. These things are delicious. And I think Derek's going to maybe link the recipe to this dip. If he can figure out how to do it. <laughs> but you take the preferably a Vidalia if you can get it or a sweet white onion and put it in the food processor good thing about being on the boat here is you can just throw these vegetable peelings in the creek <laughs> This dog might get tossed in the creek in a second. Hey, hey, Rio, stop. So we got to look at our proportion of shrimp. We don't need quite that much onion. So the recipe calls for like a pound of shrimp, but that quart it in quite a pound okay. to a small onion. And then you put a shot of Worcestershire in it and some mayonnaise to hold it together with uh, some corn chips. Which mayonnaise we got out here today? Uh, well, I like Duke's. <laughs> but you can use um, some Miracle Whip if you like a little twang to it. You know, just whatever your no, Duke's taste preference. Duke, Duke's is my preference. I, I want to get that little plug because Duke's is my preference. Well, we in the South. Yeah, man. It's either Duke's or Miracle Whip. Those are the only two we use around here. Oh, going the wrong way. So we're going to give those a nice little whirl first by themselves? Yes, sir. I'll show you the trick with these. We not? No juice. No juice, huh? Let that me... outlet up there. I got a dog on my cable. Hey. Hey, get up. You're on my cable. Keep y'all facing him while I... Uh... We might should have tested that earlier. <laughs> You're not new to the channel. You know that's not in my nature. You're not having to check. technical difficulties. What? <laughs> there we go. And then 
we got the uh, the faithful steed over here. Oh man, you begging for food? Let's uh, let's give you one of these, huh? Sit. I know people are in the uh, the comment section saying give the good boy a treat, so let's uh let's give him a treat. Oh, my dog Pork Chop will sit there. The uh, scallops will have the little bit of um, piece of the foot on them. Yeah, still on it. He will sit there and eat it raw <laughs> while I'm sitting there cleaning them, getting it ready. You had a, it, uh, got to change out yeah. the battery while he's doing that. So, so we are gonna run the onions through the processor like you just did. And then, what's the next step now? Well, we got to mince these up real good. Then we're gonna pull them out. And the trick is, you got to squeeze all the juice out of them. Okay. And since we don't have a whole lot of onion in here, I'm having to work it down some. And then we'll do the, the shrimp. And the key is on the shrimp is to sit there and pulse it. You don't want to pulverize it to nothing. Okay. Yeah, I used to fry fish. Living down salty there. Face coming in. Is that? Now that we got a living salty came in too, and he said bacon wrap scallops, sign them up. Tim Tim had to run had a HVAC issue that he had to run to go treat to. I know the feeling. <laughs> And then we got Menorcan mullet Andy down there was saying we had some mullet jumping in the creek behind us. And it looks like he might be right. We got some ripples back there. So these creeks are about to be popping with all sorts of all sorts of stuff this time of year. Well that tide's dropping, so if there's any bait in there, they'll be coming on by. Yeah. Heard something flipping behind us. Yeah, they're, they're popping back there. He's he's right. So people have commented on the uh, the tide swing here before. Um, Y'all in Beaufort have a much more drastic tide swing only a few miles down the road than we do here in Charleston, though, right? Yes, sir. Y'all, like, y'all's gets up to eight, nine, nine feet sometimes, doesn't it? Yep. Average is around, I think, seven. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, when, so if you... Look in there, and that's just after doing it. All oh, yeah, all the moisture? Mm-hmm. Why do you want that moisture out? Because uh, it'll make the dip soggy. So you want to get it all out of there and squeeze it out. Yeah, I, um, when, when building docks in, uh, in Beaufort, I had to learn that because here we plan for usually around six feet and Buford, like I said, eight, eight feet, some areas, nine feet. And it was, we started setting the elevation for the walkway the one time and the guys called me up. This was one of my first docks down in that area. And they were like, um, what elevation did you want again? Cause the, uh, the tide's going to crest that walkway. And uh, it was it was uh, it was a learning curve. The learning curve for me has always been a rough one to fight, but um, that one was very interesting down there in Beaufort. Was the uh, the tidal swing? Like I said, for us, like let me show you real quick while while he's doing that. I mean, this is this is the tidal swing for us. I mean, you could see that water was in there, and it's it's still got a ways to go out. Um, but now they in Beaufort have a much more drastic tidal swing which the other thing that that does is it really affects the current the uh the currents in these creeks with uh with a lot of water moving through them 
Um, yeah, we do have mullet jumping out there. I'm not sure this is the camera to show you that on or if we need to uh, switch over to the other Sony camcorder. But you're just pressing that moisture out. That's it. Let me see if I can get a, I got a dog on my cord again. For those of you who aren't aware, I think I've got Mariner and Rio today. Rio's the mutt and Mariner is the good all. boy. Much Rio's a good boy get. too though. You got it out? Much as I could get. We're standing right on the edge too, so. If you wait long enough. <laughs> One of them puppy dogs might go swimming. Uh, Mary would go swimming in a heartbeat if I just threw a ball in. That's part of the reason I wanted to be closer to the bank is so I can deploy that uh, that ramp there. Because let me, let me, again, I'm just glad this film quality is doing so well. But let me show you the growth that's on the side of the barge, if you can see that. So, up, oh, up, oh, we got a dog right in my face. But uh, I don't know if you can see the growth that well. But the barge needs to be brought up on a sandbar, and uh, that growth needs to be cleaned up. Now, if we were doing shrimp and grits, we would render some of this down for the gravy, correct? Some um, of those tails could. down? Could. Is that not your preferred method for shrimp and grits? If you want to go through the extra work. <laughs> so we're getting ready to. It's enough work peeling them all up. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. People really don't appreciate it a lot of times, you know. Now, do you use in your shrimp and grits? Do you use andouille or a tasso ham? You know, it's whatever is convenient and available. Okay. Now, would I prefer some of those? Yeah, but, you know, we don't have a whole lot of selection down there. Well, I need to get you some Cooper River Farm andouille then. Now you tell. <laughs> All right. Watch the magic. Well, we've got one thing. What you putting in there? The good stuff. The good stuff. Don't buy the cheap stuff. Go ahead and spend an extra 50 cent. It does make a difference. Don't need a whole lot because we're not working with a full boat there, but just put a little swig. <laughs> Sometimes you might need to move it around a little bit there. You gotta get a muzzle on you or something, huh, dog? Let's see how that look. There we go. Let's see what this looks like in here, huh? And I mean, really, other than taste, now the recipe calls to put one hard mole egg in there. Okay. But do you really need an egg in that? I don't think so. I don't think so. And you got some chips hanging out down there, don't you? And we hadn't even put the mayonnaise in there. Oh, no, we have not. We have not. I'm getting ahead of myself. But, you know, it's bound together enough. You really don't need it. Oh, no, it needs some mayonnaise. <laughs> well. Does my doctor think it needs some mayonnaise? <sighs> That's a different story. You try it without the mayonnaise first and see what you think. It doesn't need the mayonnaise. 
but I'm not going to complain if you add mayonnaise to it. Ah. But just for good measure, I'm going to get one more bite of it before the mayonnaise goes in. And that was just that uh, yellow onion, sweet onion, but you notice that'd be better with a Valdez. Oh, it would. Quite that little bite to it. Yeah, it would. Still good, but could be that much better. Just couldn't find one. That's looking good. Let's see if we can get some of these uh, fish popping a little bit more. Uh, let's see if we can get these fish popping a little bit more. It's all going under the barge. They're going to be popping behind us. Should have brought a rod. This uh, shrimp dip is quick and easy. Other than having to peel the shrimp. Yeah. No, it, it did not take long at all. Boiling the water and peeling the shrimp were the longest parts of it. But even that scallop recipe was a quick and easy. Put that a little bit in there and see how it looks. We can always add a little more to it. It's, it's looking good. I bet you this would actually be good on a sandwich instead of a instead of a chicken salad or a tuna salad. So the same way I just did the food processor, except right. do uh, raw shrimp. Without the onion, of course, but just pulse it up like that. Right. It, the way you do your shrimp burger. So, you put any breading in your shrimp burgers? No, 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 no. So you've got to wet your hand so it won't stick because, oh my God, it's gummy. But uh, have your... Uh, seafood breader or whatever you're going to use, flour. Right. And you can put a little salt and pepper or whatever kind of seasoning stuff you want to use. So say I'm going to use this, put you a pile of it. And I use uh, Louisiana shrimp breader. Okay. Is what I fry my shrimp in. So you could scoop you out your patty and have you a pile of it there and plop the patty on it. And then take it and cover it up. Okay. And you don't want to put it in real hot grease. Otherwise, it'll be too moist in the middle and be real soggy. So more of a cooler grease when you're frying. So are you like 250 instead of 300, 350? You're down I, at like a 250? You know, I don't or? know. I fry in peanut oil and I crank it all the way up until just... Before it smokes and back it down to touch. Gotcha. You know. Yeah, you fly by feel, huh? That's it. <laughs> That's why I told you I'm not a baker. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how this man eats it. Oh, he's got one there for me. Yeah. That did the trick. Yeah. Mayonnaise, definitely. Definitely Duke's mayonnaise. And but the key is you got to squeeze all the moisture out of the onion. I can see that. I can see that for sure. So just to let y'all know, what Brandon made for us today, this amazing shrimp dip, and these bacon wrapped scallops over here. That was done on the grill, and the shrimps were done in the galley. 
What else you got for us today, then? That's it. That's it? So, with that being said, a big special thanks to Brandon for coming up from Beaufort to hang out with us today. Hopefully this stream was great. The video quality looks like it was pretty darn good. And hopefully the audio is finally figured out. And then uh, what we're going to do, just we're going to cruise on back to the dock now, right? We're probably going to finish eating this and then cruise to the dock. But for now, that's all with y'all. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. Thanks again. And see you on the next one. Later. Actually, I say that. I got to work my way all the way over here. <laughs> I don't just get to press the red button. Um, so let me go over here real quick. Say goodbye to y'all. It looks like we still got Andy, Jeff, um, Edward, all y'all hanging out. Thanks again for tuning in. I got a dog. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Back up. You're dragging the cord with you. I got a dog grabbing my cord. Um, but thanks again for all y'all tuning in. A lot of fun. Yes, Jeff, it was. Loads of fun. Thank you. See you on the next one. Have a great weekend. Uh, it is Saturday, so come back out tomorrow. See you again.